Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here. So I'm going to be doing a pick a card reading for the upcoming Scorpio full moon. Actually, by the time I upload this, I think it'll be the day of the full moon on May the 18th. So for those of you who have been watching my tarot channel for a while, you'll know that um, I've mentioned before that I really enjoy Scorpio energy, even though it can be quite dark and heavy, it definitely is transformative. Like it gives you an opportunity to shed any type of lower emotions that you have been harboring. So like feelings of resentment, um, anger, shame, frustration. It's like those those feelings that human beings are afraid to explore. Scorpio energy dives right into those types of emotions in order for them to be released and cleared. So this this uh, excuse me, Scorpio full moon will be a perfect opportunity for you to release any blockages that has been weighing you down or holding you back. So pretty much um, in this pick a card reading, I'll be telling you what blockages you need to release and also giving you advice moving forward, depending on what comes out in the cards so just take a second to look at each pile and see which stone you are more drawn towards intuitively and whatever stone that is I will leave the timestamps down below in the description box and then you can just skip ahead forward to the timestamp with the corresponding stone whichever one you chose so just take a second and pause this video just look at the stones carefully and just see which one you are drawn towards Okay, group number one. So you chose the yellow stone, which is the honey cow site. So I'll move that to the side. And let's see what your cards say for the Scorpio full moon. Focus on the light. Okay. Comparison. Receptivity. The Five of Swords in Reverse and the Justice card. Okay, so for some of you, this Scorpio full moon is going to trigger a past memory for you, a past situation where you felt like you were not treated fairly at all. Um, you were betrayed possibly in some way or just something happened to you where you feel like it wasn't fair and that you did not deserve to be treated that way. This could be family related it could be about a friendship it could be about a romantic partnership um, it could be about a career or a job just kind of take it as it resonates but a lot of you feel like you were just not treated very fairly and it looks like you never fully healed from that um, you never fully healed from that feeling of being rejected or abandoned or betrayed it's like it's the energy that I'm getting is like when someone close does something to you and it affects you a hundred times more than if a stranger did something to you you see what i'm saying that's why betrayal is such a difficult emotion to walk through or to work through because we can only be betrayed by people that we love you know you, you can't be betrayed by a stranger really because you have no loyalty or expectations with strangers so i feel that energy so it must have been something or someone who was very close to you that had the ability to make you feel this way i think that there was a lot of power struggles or power trips within that dynamic and um, it just left you feeling very defeated and I feel like the Scorpio full moon is asking you to finally release the the leftover energy from that situation like the pain that you felt uh, the shame that you felt any type of heavy emotions that's been weighing on your heart you're getting the opportunity now to pretty much clear that out um, let me pull one more just to clarify because with the five of swords what I'm getting is that there was a power struggle in that dynamic, meaning that this person could have just wanted to get the upper hand over you in some way, or they're just the type of person who will give you the silent treatment or they, they will withhold love from you in order to punish you. It's kind of like just someone who, even though you're supposed to love each other, instead that person is treating you like an enemy and trying to punish you or harm you in some way. For some of you, even if it's not a specific person, um, it could be like cycles that you've been in where you have continuously seen this or you have felt this, like people are constantly trying to uh, kind of get the up upper hand over you or dominate you in some way and it's very unfair and you're being asked to release this. Let me pull one more. two of cups okay yeah this is like some soulmate energy so like i said this could be just anything that you are emotionally invested in but it's definitely something that was supposed to 
love you, like someone who was supposed to love you or who was supposed to treat you with compassion and kindness, but they did not. Um, some re for some reason, the connection went south or things just went sour and that person became kind of fixated on getting the upper hand over you as opposed to trying to fix what was going on. And you may have fed into the power games as well, like trying to get the upper hand over them. And it just looks like things just did not end well for either one of you really. And like I said, you're needing to uh, finally release this and clear this out. And I think that one way you can do that is changing your perspective on it. Um, because when someone is trying to get the upper hand over you or they're trying to give you the silent treatment or withhold their emotions. Most likely this person has gone through something in their life where they were made to feel powerless. And so now they're trying to assert their power over you. They're trying to make you feel helpless or they're trying to win quote unquote at the game because in the past they may have lost, you know, they may have gotten their heart broken. They may have been ghosted. They may have um, had someone who dismissed them, you know, things like that. And they felt very inadequate. Um, compared to this person or went in the situation with that person. So now it's like they tried to turn that energy around and put it onto you. You see, like they wanted to be the one that got the upper hand for once rather than being the one who was taken advantage of. I hope that that makes sense. So when you see things from that perspective, you understand that uh, whoever this person was or the situation was, they were operating from a negative space. They were operating from a space of uh, hurt within themselves and that's why they hurt you and you're needing to release it. And for those of you who um, you just feel this sense of spite towards this person or this situation, um, because you do feel like they got the upper hand, you're needing to also look at that in a different way as well because you can't really lose when you've learned the lesson that you were meant to learn. You know, like you can't really um, see it as, okay, this person won and I lost. Because as long as you learn exactly what you're meant to learn, then you did not lose. And in some cases, you actually would be the winner in this situation because you're the one who learns and grows because of the fact that you feel like you lost. But this person most likely is going to move on to something else and have this cycle repeat until they are defeated or until something drastic happens that forces them to change. So people who, like I said, try to get the upper hand over you and then betray you or abandon you, they never win in the end because you have the ability to learn and grow and they will probably, probably stay stuck in their ways until they are forced to change. So, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna, do I wanna pull one? No, I don't wanna pull one more, okay? I thought I was being guided to pull another clarifier, but they're telling me to move on. So receptivity in the reverse so it looks like for the scorpio full moon you're also being asked to really um look at the ways in which you've been kind of shortchanging yourself is what i it's what i'm hearing it's kind of like settling for the bare minimum settling for crumbs when it comes to love or friendship it's like just settling for this treatment that you really don't deserve and I feel like some of you think that you deserve to be treated badly subconsciously um, because you may have been treated badly for so long that it's within your subconscious mind that you need to continue to be treated badly. It's like once we're treated horribly and it is like a shock to our subconscious mind, then it's like we have that embedded program that we're not worthy. And then we will continuously seek out situations that prove that we're not worthy. You know, people who don't love us, people who do take advantage of us and things of that sort. And I feel like a lot of you are being asked to examine that aspect of yourself and to understand that you are worthy of love, of abundance, like you're worthy of having a happy, fulfilling, peaceful life. And what's blocking you is your belief that you are not worthy of it. Also, I feel like a lot of you have a lot of baggage in your life. Um, and that doesn't have to just mean emotional baggage that could be physical baggage meaning people like there may be people in your life who you're holding on to and you're wondering why your life isn't getting better you're wondering why things aren't working out for you and it's because there's no space for better things to come into your life for new things to come into your life when you're holding on to people or situations thoughts patterns and things like that um, that no longer serve you is no room for the universe to bring in your blessings so you're needing to make room for your blessings for sure is what I'm getting from that card some of you just genuinely have a problem with receiving like even okay for example when someone offers to buy you food because they're about to buy food your immediate reaction could be like oh no no no, i'm okay even though you didn't really stop and think about it like maybe you are hungry <laughs> but your first reaction is to just always say no and that sounds like something that's not serious it sounds like something light but it is serious because um that's your subconscious program kind of telling you that by you receiving you're being a burden of some sort I hope that that makes sense and you're needing to understand that you're not a burden and that you are worthy and deserving of 
all things that are good. You're deserving of love. You're deserving of abundance. And these things should flow to you easily because you are worthy of it. But first you have to believe that you are worthy of it. So comparison. And this could tie into this card because you could be constantly comparing yourself to other people. And that's why you could put yourself down or shame yourself in some way and think that you're not deserving of good things because you're comparing your life to someone else's life. Or you're just constantly in this state of mind where you feel like you can always be doing better. It's like treating yourself like a project, like, I know I can do better than this, or, you know, I need to heal from this. And it's like every day you're kind of devoting yourself to bettering yourself, quote unquote. But what you're doing is actually turning yourself into a project and kind of telling yourself you're not good enough as you are. So I have to get up every day and work on you until you're perfect. And you can hear how that will be very detrimental to your to your psyche. So some of you, you know, you have been putting in work when it comes to your healing journey, but you're being asked to not see yourself as this project or as this this product that needs to be perfected because you're already perfect the way that you are. Um, you can still work on healing. You can still you know, take those steps forward in your journey, but you have to go about it a different way. You have to start from a place of loving and accepting yourself first and then building from there. Don't start from a place of shaming yourself. And if you are comparing yourself to other people, very normal because of, you know, social media and things of that sort, um, you're needing to be mindful of that as well. You have to catch yourself while you're doing it because sometimes you could be doing it without realizing it. You could just be scrolling on social media and not realizing that you keep, your eyes keep wandering to, those women that you wish you looked like or those men who have these certain cars or whatever that you wish you had like you know what i'm saying you could think it's just innocently scrolling but your subconscious mind is taking in all these messages of i'm not good enough look how this person's living and i'm not and it's like it, it really is weighing on your self-esteem and you can have anything you want that uh, these other people have like i said before you just have to know that you're worthy of them in order for you to obtain them so the focus on the light card to me this card is talking about really focusing on your gifts, focusing on the things that are right about you, focusing on the positives of your life and holding on to that energy. Because some of you, like I said, have been in this energy of just really finding everything that's wrong with you, really just observing like all the ways in which you are broken or defective or things of that sort, like all those things that we label ourselves as. And you're needing to focus more on your positive qualities. Even if you have to, you know, before bed, write out 20, things that you love about yourself like do that in the morning and at night just give yourself much more love than you have been giving yourself and give yourself much more credit than you've been giving yourself also with this focus on the light card um I'm getting that some of you are just really needing to trust in a higher power and understand that the divine is guiding you and um helping you and is on your side so the universe is not going to let you just uh go through life suffering without helping you in some way shape or form through your suffering i hope that makes sense so you're needing to really trust in that higher power that things that things are going to get better especially at times where you are feeling hopeless just kind of look up it, it's interesting that this card came out because it reminds me of something that i uh, my ex-fiance used to say he would always say like you know focus on heaven put your head up and focus on heaven when things are just kind of crumbling around you um you just need to have that faith and that hope that things are going to get better so I hope that that was helpful. Um, trying to figure out if there's anything else I'm getting. Nope, that's it. Okay, I hope that that was helpful. Um, if you are drawn or do, if you feel drawn to watch any of the other two uh, messages that come through, then feel free. But for those of you who, you know, you got your message and you're gone, I will see you guys in my next video. So moving on to group number two. Okay, moving on to group number two, which was the blue, I believe it's called Turquonite stone. So let's see what the messages are for you, group number two. Oh, conscious connections. Stress in reverse. Patience in reverse. Page of Swords, Three of Wands. Okay. Oh, make sure I'm getting all of these in frame. Okay. So. Three of Wands comes out first along with the Page of Swords. So it looks like a lot of you are headed into a new stage or new cycle of your life. Um, it looks like you may have been 
stuck for a while in a specific cycle or you just felt like things were becoming very repetitive like you were doing the same thing every day going through the same hardships every day and you're just feeling like you need a drastic change like you need something new and exciting in, in your life so some of you could be embarking on a new journey physically meaning you could be moving or you could be switching jobs or something along those lines or it could be that you are going on a journey mentally and emotionally and spiritually, meaning that you are needing to elevate in those areas. And with the Page of Swords being here, I feel like this is something that is very new to a lot of you. Um, it's looking like you are basically needing to change the way you think about a lot of uh, situations in your life. So this is kind of like an awakening where you start to see things in life very differently. You may have had a perception of certain situations before, and now it's like you're having all this clarity that is basically helping you to see things from a different perspective and helping you to start over. See what I'm saying? For example, if let's say that you were dating someone in the past and they cheated on you. And of course, it was extremely, extremely painful. It's kind of like when you start to have this awakening and you start to see things from a higher perspective, you're kind of like, okay, I understand exactly why that had to happen because this person was blocking my path. This person was in the way and the universe stepped in and did whatever it had to do to drag me away from that person this actually reminds me of something me and my sister were talking about earlier um wendy williams the talk show host how she divorced her husband and now it's like she's living her best life she's out having fun and the universe tried to take her husband away from her plenty of times tried to give her those uh warnings or red flags that something wasn't right but she just didn't have the strength to walk away or that's how it looks from my perspective um and now it's kind of like seeing her so happy and, and flourishing um it's kind of like I, I know she can look back and see now why that situation had to happen to remove him because she was blocking he was blocking her path so for some of you you could still have someone right now that is in your vicinity that is not meant to be on your soul path with you and you will know this because no matter how hard you try with this person it's like it gets nowhere the the fights are repetitive um, it's like a, a cycle or a circle that keeps on going round and around. And that's how you'll know that this situation is a blockage on your path rather than something that you're supposed to take with you. I'm going to pull one more to clarify. Four of Wands, wow. So literally, like I said, some of you literally could can be moving or moving out of your house, switching homes. Um, or you could just be moving away from someone who you thought you were going to build a happy home with or someone who you felt like was home to you. Like when you first got with this person or when you first met this person, you felt like they were home. They were very comfortable to you. And sometimes that's not a good thing because sometimes when someone's comfortable, it's kind of like they remind you of someone else from the past and sometimes that's not always positive but like i said i think that um you're needing something new and exciting in your life so you're needing to uh shed fear with the scorpio full moon because a lot of you could have been stuck out of fear out of fear of the unknown not knowing what's going to happen next wanting to stay in your comfort zone um even though it was not serving you it was not for your highest good so with the scorpio full moon you're needing to release whatever attachments you have that are not like i said a part of your soul mission or not helping you to grow and don't be afraid of letting go don't be afraid of the pain that's associated with letting go because it will pass and don't be afraid of you know maybe i'm not going to find anything else or if i embark on this journey maybe i might fail and things of that sort you're not going to fail i'm hearing that very clearly you're not going to fail you may have minor failures along the way in your journey but it'll never be enough to the point where you're completely out of the game you know you'll learn and grow each time you hit a roadblock so it's not as bad as you think like you moving forward it's not going to be as bad or as painful as you think at, that it is it's going to be something very beneficial to you so one second let me grab water before we move on okay so the next card is patience in the upright you see in the car there is clearly a pregnant woman and basically what this card is saying is that sometimes you have to wait for divine timing you have to wait for things to be just right um, when someone is growing a baby inside of them they don't want to have the baby early to get it out the way you know they want to wait that full nine months so the baby can be delivered healthy and that's pretty much the essence of this card but because it's in the reverse this is saying that some of you could have 
been in a cycle for too long. You're kind of like what I'm hearing is like the baby's overdue. Like you've been in a cycle for far too long. You've been stuck for far too long and you're needing to move forward because it's past your due date. Um, I feel like a lot of you have a lot of blessings coming your way moving forward, but you're still, like I said, stuck in that past cycle. So it'll be difficult for you to receive any abundance that's supposed to come your way because like I said, there's still that, that fear. I'm just feeling that fear of like, I don't want to make the wrong choice. I don't want to let this go and then regret it. Um, you have to release that fear. Especially if you're, like I said, if you're staying in a situation out of fear that you don't know if things will get better, that's the number one reason to not stay. You know, like staying from a place of fear lets you know that you're not in the right situation and it's not helping you. And again, this could be for romantic partners, friendships, family, career. So just take it as it resonates. Stress in the reverse. You're needing to stop stressing about the decision and just making it from what I'm hearing. The decision to move forward, the decision to let go. You have been pondering it a lot is what I'm getting. It's like a lot of mental energy has been spent on, you know, what do I do now to the point where you are almost exhausted pretty much because you've spent so much mental energy trying to figure things out that you can't even make any physical moves because you're drained and exhausted. So some of you are needing to make more moves and think less. Of course, you need to think before you make certain moves because you want to weigh out the pros and cons, but it shouldn't be to the point where you're drained and stagnant because you're thinking so much. So less talk and more action, I feel like, is going to be very beneficial for you. For some of you, you're needing to really take care of your bodies more uh, with the stress card being in reverse. I feel like for some of you, whatever cycle that you have been in it could have took a toll on your physical health in some way and your body is needing to rest and recuperate and um, you're just really needing to heal physically so especially if um what i'm hearing is especially if you have been in a stressful situation where it was very in anxiety inducing so like your fight or flight response in your body kept going off because the situation was stressing you out so much so your body just really really needs a break from all of that uh, energy all that excitement that came along with these past situations and when i say excitement i mean not excitement in a good way like your body just being overwhelmed with emotions so conscious connection this is one of my favorite cards in the deck Basically what this card is saying is that you're needing to be more conscious when it comes to connecting with other people. You're needing to figure out the role that people play in your life and make sure that if they are not adding anything to your life, they don't need to be in it. And that doesn't mean that you can only be friends or connect with someone when you can use them for something, but it means that sometimes when we just want companionship, we fall into this pattern of going with what we know. So we will gravitate towards the same type of friends over and over, the same type of romantic partners over and over. And when you sit and think about it and you sit and say, okay, what are these people doing for me? Like what, what impact are they having on my life? You can start to see that they're having nothing but a negative impact on your life and that you benefit them more than they benefit you. And um, it's just like this uneven exchange of energy. So you're needing to meet people that are pretty much on your same wavelength, who think like you, who love like you, who will give you that energy back that you give to them. See what I'm saying? And it's all about now, now, <laughs> excuse me, meeting people who you don't have to learn lessons through trauma with them anymore. You know, like you don't have to meet someone and go through this crazy traumatic cycle in order for you to learn. I feel like you've gone through that enough and now it's about time to make connections based off of happiness and the things that you enjoy doing rather than making connections based off of pain. See what I'm saying? A lot of us can meet someone and their wounds can be very similar to ours and we literally bond through that pain. And sometimes that works out, but a lot of, a lot of times it doesn't. Um, you have to be able to connect with people on something that is not involving um, mutual trauma, if you get my drift. So yeah, I think that that's it. Um, overall, I think that there's definitely a need for you to move forward. Like I said, something new and exciting is waiting for you, you know, possibly meeting your soul tribe, possibly meeting the person you're supposed to be with um, long term. But first, you have to take that leap of faith and take that first step forward. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, if you do feel drawn to any of the other crystals and feel free to watch those too. But for those of you who are not, and this is your last, um, or this is your ending of this video, then thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. So let's move on to the third crystal. Okay, group number three. So you chose the amethyst stone. So let's see what's going on with you for this Scorpio full moon energy. 
in the world, not of the world. Sorrow in reverse, new vision. Make sure I'm getting all of these in frame. New vision, page of cups in reverse, 10 of wands. So immediately what I'm getting with that 10 of wands and that page of cups is that some of you have been overcompensating for someone else's lack of emotions so for example if you were in a relationship with someone who was emotionally unavailable you probably felt the need to put in even more work to to compensate for the work that they were not putting into the relationship see what i'm saying and i feel like this is a pattern for you that could be coming to the surface with this scorpio full moon it's like the realization that you really have been going out of your way to try to make things work with people giving them your all allowing them to cross your boundaries like allowing them to not treat you the way that you deserve to be treated and i think that um that's coming from something that you have experienced in the past most likely childhood trauma i wouldn't be surprised at all if that's the case because with the scorpio full moon uh it would make sense for childhood trauma to come through because a lot of us our wounds started with childhood so if we are going to transform which um that scorpio energy that that transformative energy if we're going to transform a lot of us are usually kind of forced to go back to our childhood and analyze it and figure out what happened um in order for us to heal it so with the page of cups being here i feel like uh, for a lot of you you just never got your emotional needs met meaning that you were not given that love you were not given that attention you were not given that affection and on the flip side of that not only were you not given those things but then you could have been raised in an environment where other people expected you to give them those things even though they didn't give it to you so it's kind of like you know if you have parents who are emotionally unavailable and they don't uh they didn't nurture you emotion emotionally they didn't give you those positive affirmations or that positive reinsurance in order for you to have a healthy self-esteem it's like not only did they not do those things for you but then they expected you to kind of cater to them and to kind of walk on eggshells around them and to make them comfortable and things of that sort so for some of you this is like a people pleasing wound that's within you where you're so used to ignoring your own feelings and pleasing other people um, that it just has become second nature to you and I think with the Scorpio full moon you're finally going to be realized or you're finally going to realize that um, that pattern has to go because it's doing you a lot of harm um, it's draining you, it's tiring you out. And I think that honestly with this uh, Scorpio full moon, cause what I'm hearing is that you already know this. This is just something I'm reiterating to you or like I'm just basically confirming what you already know. But I think that a lot of you have already figured this out and you already know this. As human beings, we just really need those emotional needs to be met. We really do, we need attention, we need love. Even though a lot of people act like wanting attention is a bad thing, uh, it's a natural human thing to want attention especially from someone who we have a close connection with whether that be family or friends a romantic partner it's normal to want that attention because that's an emotional need that you want met but uh, the problem is that you may have been dealing with people who are emotionally bankrupt so they can't give you that need or they can't fulfill that need for you so then you have to pick up the slack and you go above and beyond hoping that if you go above and beyond for them that they will finally open up and reciprocate that so i hope that made sense let me get a drink of water really quickly Yeah, so what I'm getting is that a lot of you are now moving into this space where uh, you're needing to realize and understand your worth and realize and understand when it's time to back out of a situation when a person is just not putting in the effort and the work that you are. Yeah, this is going to be some very deep, very deep healing because I think that a lot of people, they are starting to become aware of where these patterns come from in, how, in childhood. And so a lot of healing work is being done. And you don't mind working with that 10 of wands here. Like when you're in a relationship with someone, you don't mind working to you know make things right. But now you're needing to turn that energy around onto yourself. You know, you need to work on yourself as intensely as you work on other people you know, on, on your relationship with other people, you need to work just as intensely on the relationship with yourself. The same way you have compassion with people, you need to have compassion with yourself. You see what I'm saying? So this is all about dropping those heavy burdens that you have been carrying and using your energy now to grow and evolve. Let me put, let me, excuse me, pull one more just to clarify. The magician card yeah so this energy has been blocking your manifestations so if you want 
good things in life or you want to manifest abundance into your life, it's blocked because you're spending so much energy on trying to prove yourself and just overcompensating and trying to get someone to see the value in you that in the process you are devaluing yourself. And when you devalue yourself, you put you plant in your mind that you are not worthy. And that spills over into every area of your life. It's not just love. It spills over into work. It spills over into just anything in life. It starts to spill over into. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they think that their relationship romantically has nothing to do with their job. And those are two separate things, but they're, they're one in the same. Because like I said, it when you feel like you're unworthy or undeserving because you keep giving to a person who treat you that way it blocks you from your blessings in every sense of the word because you don't think you're worthy of it so you can't attract you can't attract it and if you do attract it you'll end up self-sabotaging so that's why it's very important for you to heal and to release this this need to to prove yourself or, or this need to overcompensate to get someone to notice you or love you uh, because you can do all of that for yourself and you'll be surprised that when you start working on that relationship with yourself you're going to just start attracting people to your life who it's it, it just becomes easy like you stop attracting people who are wanting to take advantage of you. Okay, let me rephrase that. You never stop attracting those people, but you won't let them into your life. Let's put it that way. Um, you'll still come across people who are trying to use you, who are trying to um, have you do all the work in the relationship. But as you learn and grow and as you build that healthy relationship with yourself, you'll no longer fall for those type of people and you'll no longer be attracted to those type of people, really. And you'll be too busy with people who actually do love you and understand you because those are the type of relationships that you'll start pulling into your life once these wounds are cleared. So new vision is here. So this is a rebirth for sure. For some of you, this is like really shedding that lower level energy and finally feeling your heart at peace or your mind at peace and also feeling like your heart is much lighter. Um, it's kind of like a new version of yourself, seeing yourself in a whole new light. I think a lot of you are very harsh with your words when it comes to yourself. And I think that that's no fault of your own. Um, for those of you who have been mistreated or like I said, you haven't been nurtured properly. I feel like it's really not your fault that you don't think very highly of yourself because how could you, you know, no one taught you how to think highly of yourself. Um, but you're needing now to understand that you have the ability to heal from all of this and you have the ability to really reset everything. Like you have the ability to start your life all over and you have the ability to now see yourself in a different way. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be easy. You can't just say, okay, I'm healed. This is how I see myself now. I'm great. And then it's that. Like, no, you have to actually do it consistently because your self-esteem has been weighed on repeatedly. Like you didn't just get mistreated one time and then your self-esteem was gone it was a repetitive thing that was happening so just like it was a repetitive thing to kind of tear you down now it's going to be a repetitive thing to lift you up and to see a new version of yourself but like i said i feel like a lot of you don't mind doing the work um on when it comes to your relationship so now you have to like i said keep that same energy and do the work when it comes to yourself i also think that um for a lot of you you've been playing this role for so long that people have kind of put you in a box like you're like that person that people go to whenever they need something and they just know that you're going to be fine with it like they're just like oh yeah i'll just ask this person to do it they'll do it for sure because you may have a problem with boundaries and like i said being a people pleaser so now you may start to set those boundaries or you're needing to set those boundaries and start telling people no and start putting yourself first and you are going to possibly lose people People are going to start distancing themselves from you, but that's how you know that they were never really your people. If you saying no and setting those boundaries and seeing yourself in a new light is offensive to them, then they were never really your people. Also, for a lot of you, you're going to be, like I said, just flourishing this new version of yourself. And it's going to make other people very uncomfortable because they don't have it in them to do this. They are pretty much staying the same. They're stagnant. So they want you to stay the same as well, because when they see you elevating, it's like they feel inadequate because they are becoming well aware that they are not elevating. So they would rather see you stuck and rather see you down. Um, but you just have to kind of like brush that off and just continue to ascend. And you can't stay down for anyone, you know? You can't hold back your healing 
just so that other people around you won't feel like you changed or things like that because you have every right to grow and change and if anybody has a problem with that it's because they are stagnant themselves sorrow is here in reverse a lot of you have been dealing with a, a lot of very sad situations in your life um, a lot of pain a lot of betrayal a lot of rejection a lot of abandonment a lot of you have just been learning extremely intense lessons through pain and sorrow and what i'm seeing is that those days are over um, you no longer need to learn lessons that way you know, sometimes you can learn lessons just from absorbing, just by, sorry, observing other people. You don't have to now learn it the hard way. I feel like for a lot of you, you were in a cycle where you definitely learned a lot about yourself and um, it was a lot of pain. And because of that reason, you have kind of purged it and cleared it. And now you're moving towards a cycle in your life where you can bond with people and uh, learn lessons and things of that sort without it having to be so painful and dramatic. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of us learn our greatest lesson through pain, but it just gets to a point where it's like, okay, I've learned the lessons I need to learn through this. I don't have to keep on subject subjecting myself to pain. Also, for a lot of you, um, you could be wearing pain as like a, a badge of honor is what I'm hearing, meaning that you've been in pain for so long and you've been through trials and tribulations for so long that you kind of form that into your identity like you don't know who you are without that pain and I'm thinking that you're needing to get to know who you are without that pain you're needing to really get to know yourself because that pain in those situations that's not you those are things you've been through but it's not you see what I'm saying and it's very easy to get uh, wrapped up in that type of energy because if you have been mistreated your whole life it makes sense that you are kind of like okay I've been playing this role forever I don't know what to do like now that I'm moving away from people and situations that treat me like this I don't know how to react I don't know how to behave and that's okay you're starting from ground zero and you're working your way up the beauty of all of this is that when you start from rock bottom you can build yourself up to be whoever you want to be hence the new vision card so in the world not of the world a lot of you definitely had some sort of spiritual awakening you're seeing things from a higher perspective you're understanding that a lot of the things that are going on in life are just lessons to us you know when someone is of the world they're very much attached to the earthly realm meaning that the things that they value are superficial things so they might value cars clothes and things of that sort not to say that there's anything wrong with one of those things but when you are like i said of the world it's like those things actually define you or they are the reason why you feel good about yourself you know that's for the people who are of the world they're not in touch with their higher self they're not in touch with the universe or god whatever you you know refer to it as whatever you believe in they're not in touch with that higher realm instead they're just very focused on accumulating external wealth to make them feel good and you are going against that you're the opposite of that everything that you have been through it's been helping you to grow internally and it's helping you to become very solid within yourself so you are developing the self-esteem that not a lot of people have because a lot of people's self-esteem like i said comes from an external place and because of what you've been through you rebirthing yourself and you rebuilding yourself is going to be you feeling that uh, sense of security and confidence genuinely having nothing to do with external things but you just feel it inside of you genuinely you feel loved you feel worthy and it has nothing to do with any of your possessions or what's going on in this world it has everything to do with how you feel on the inside so you can still participate obviously you're a human being so you could still participate in this world um you can still uh excuse me you can still you know make your money and pursue your goals and dreams it, it, that doesn't mean that you have to completely disconnect from the world but it's kind of like you you're needing to make sure you see the higher purpose of this life and i think that a lot of you are doing that and hence why i feel like a lot of you when you grow and evolve you're going to make people very uncomfortable because when people are like i said when people are of the world they're very fixated on things that are very superficial and it's like they don't want you to change grow and for you to stop being that way because then it holds up a mirror to them and they feel like now they're pressured to stop and they don't have the confidence or the faith or the willingness to do so so yeah it's it's um like i said you can still participate in this human experience, accumulate abundance for yourself and things of that sort, but make sure that you're seeing the higher perspective of everything. Make sure you're seeing the higher spiritual lesson of what you go through so that you won't let these earthly experiences destroy you and uh, ruin you. Instead, you'll let them help you to grow and ascend. So that is it. I hope that that was helpful. 
Um, thank you so much for watching this video and my zodiac sign readings are coming um, I might have to do elements again this month because I'm kind of late and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye